we took a we got a car and, and we drove to the crash site which was about an hour out of town it was through five checkpoints After struggling down these dirt roads and making our way to the crash site, um, we managed to find the scene of the, the crash itself. The fields uh, of wheat, of long grass, of sunflowers. Uh, you knew that there was a hell on the other side, but but the way there, this scene, it was striking. It was really attractive. Um, but when we arrived, uh, it so clashed with with the images you first saw. This almost inhuman, this hell of of, of smoldering wreckage and pieces of debris and, and bodies that barely looked human anymore. Um, I guess I was struck when I first arrived. Uh, you, see, you see these scars of black uh, across this field of yellow wheat and it's striking. Uh, and you see these bodies that how quickly they lose their humanity. Uh, they're twisted, they're broken, they're bent, they're limbless, headless, skinless, and and when they do have skin, the skin, the life quickly fades from it. And in the positions they were left in, the color of their skin, you have to look twice to make sure that they're human. And once you realize, once you see the possessions around them, um, the guidebook to Indonesia, the, the Sudoku book that was never filled out, the newspaper from that morning. These things really, at least for me, uh, drove home the whole humanity of the incident. It wasn't the bodies. They almost didn't seem human anymore, but it was the possessions that were left over uh, that were striking. The, the things I saw at the, the crash site, they're not the kind of images that, that leave your head quickly. And, and when you walked through, it was really like walking through a sort of hell. You couldn't have created a scene that was more awful than, than what we saw, more horrific than what we saw. The bodies themselves were marked with these white flags, but you were perpetually looking down because there were pieces of body everywhere. One woman, her foot was in this perfect condition. Her toenails were painted this bright red and it was unchipped. And yet the rest of her body had been just torn apart. It was just this one last piece of her humanity left. Another boy, his face was in perfect condition, but there was a two inch hole in his head. His shirt was bloodless. If you looked at him from the front, maybe he could have been alive, but 
he wasn't. When I walked through this place, I was just trying to gather all these details, well, for me, for my writing. You, you're conscious of seeing something awful and important and in a, and in a horrific way, like, well, something really powerful, something really unique and like, you want to absorb all of it, to take it all in and yet, well, it's hard to do this with something that's that can have such impact, that's so horrifying. Uh, but for me, at least, I wanted to take as much of it in as I can. It's important not to look away. You know, just being being in Donetsk, being in eastern Ukraine, seeing all this death, you're conscious of how quickly a life can be taken, whether it it's the person walking across the playground during shelling um, or whether it's the people who fell 10,000 meters uh, in a plane. You quickly become conscious being here, being in the middle of this conflict, uh, that life is a really fragile thing. Thank you.